Hey, Brent from Brent's Runabout, just checking in with week number five <laughs> of the training to my first 100 miler. Well, it's been an interesting week four. We should probably recap that first. I'm going to go ahead and just share out my screen. We'll go from there. So really just kind of starting back with really the end of week three. I uh, <laughs> decided to join in my youngest sister. Uh, her and my brother-in-law were visiting over the holidays. Everyone was being COVID safe leading up to the, the visit. And uh, she does a hip hop class. I think a couple different ones. One's more workout focus and our one's more actual like hip hop moves and things like that. Um, <laughs> so I was like, well, what the heck? I'll join in and uh, <laughs> have some fun. It was more me kind of following along more so making up my own stuff, um, just being kind of the over energized, over half excited, happy person I am and <laughs> getting a little crazy with my dancing, um, which I'll admit is probably my most favorite part of most uh, weddings I've ever been to is always the dancing. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. The ceremony, everything is wonderful and great. <laughs> um, but anywho, so I joined in and I'm just kind of dancing along barefoot on the hardwood floor in the kitchen area where she was doing it. And, you know, we're having a good old time. And um, this was shortly after I was just coming back from my fall where I'd injured my upper foot, which was probably, I'm trying to think, a few days before all this. Or probably about a week up before all this. Um, and I kind of noticed my foot was just... Yeah, I was like, okay, yeah, I kind of feeling as I'm doing these little dance moves and going, you know, doing some crazy footwork and whatnot, kind of being goofy and whatnot and silly. And, uh, but there was nothing that was like, ooh, yeah, I really tweaked something or ooh, yeah, this didn't feel right as I was doing um, dancing around. Um, so next day was easy um, day. It was just rest day off. It was Friday. And anyway, when I checked in for if the video I did was last Friday or Saturday. Anywho, um, today is technically Saturday, January 2nd, um, <laughs> but we were traveling back from my in-laws anyways. Uh, the next day out running was uh, that follow was the next, actually we could go today, it was Saturday, where I needed to go out and do 1.74 and, um, or no, one and a half, I ended up doing 1.74 and I talked my wife and also sister into joining. <laughs> and so I turned into a little follow the leader run, which was fun. So I just took them around. And I had a general idea of where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do, but it was also going to depend on, you know, who was out where, or if it was going to be busy. So basically I just took them out across the park, went, you know, diagonal across the park, which is a big open field area instead of just following the path. And eventually we were going to go down to this nice little, um, I think it's an irrigation, not irrigation pond, but it's like a, a spillover pond for when it rains a lot. And also, you know, birds and everything's gathering. They, it's a nice little wood chip, um, um, wood mulch path around this. Unfortunately, there was some, a couple walking by, so we had to keep going around. And eventually we were going up this hill that I like. And then I realized like, ooh, this cuts into the woods just in this area. So if you're following my Instagram, which if not, just go out to Instagram, look up Brent's run about all one word. I'll link to it below. <laughs> and I posted that, hey, we, you know, we'd done this run. I shot through in some videos. It basically turned into me leading them into the woods, which I knew about. But then I thought I was going to be able to easily get us back out and then realize, oh, wait, we dead ended into this area. It basically turned into this whole exploration run of us kind of looking for a way to get to the path I knew was, you know, basically getting from one path to this other path. Um, what I didn't realize is that we were going to have to cross the small creek <laughs> that was surrounded by pricker bushes. <laughs> um, finally, my wife found a way across. So we crossed, jumped the creek, found, got on the path, and we're coming, across, coming back. And there was a couple of downed trees. And at one point, I remember hopping up on the path onto one of those trees and jumping down the other side. And the whole time I'm in my zero hanas, which it's like a love-hate relationship with those things. I love it. They're not actually running shoes. They're kind of like an all around kick around shoes. They're great in that respect. And I do love running in them because it's just like, it's basically just, I wish I had them nearby. I could go grab them and um, show you, but it's, it's just like the sole. And then there's like an insert, which is kind of just really a, 
I don't even know if it's a phone. It's just some sort of very kind of compact material to just give you a little bit of a buffer between the sole and your foot and the ground. Um, anywho, they're not really made for running. Zero Shoes even notes this. They, but they say, you know, people are going to use this for running. And I've done it. I've ran in them, hiked in them, trail ran in them. <laughs> you know, ten mile, two different 10-mile runs in them. It never really had issues. And then it's just all of a sudden, like, I started going a little too hard this past year and I injured a big toe sprinting. And it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, it's just like, okay, darn, like I you take a couple steps forward, take a step back because I injured myself. And it's just, was it too much too soon? Yes. Was it maybe not the right footwear? Probably. Um, but anywho, I didn't know where we were going to go on this, on this run. So I threw those on because I didn't want to go out in my zero shoe mesa trails which are trail shoes and they've got more of a a lug or they've got a a good lug system on the bottom of the shoe so i didn't want to be running around on concrete in the street and whatnot on those um versus if i go out my by myself in those i will then head to i guess i can stop sharing as i (laughs) see more just me (laughs) there we go i let you know those are if i know i'm going to go over to the park and just do loops on the grass. I love those because I like the extra grip. I like running in those. They have like a bit, it's kind of a really cool insert. It's like this kind of honeycomb. I don't even like, I don't know if it's diamond material, but it's really cool because it's, it's minimal. It allows, I feel like the thing just kind of work like some mattresses where it just like, it kind of folds on itself to then cushion the right way for your foot. Like it's not a big sole. It's only like, it's very minimal. Um, but it's a world of a difference between the Mesa Trail and the Cloud. Sorry, Cloud is the sandal. Mesa Trail and the Hana, which is what I've been talking about this whole time. If I said Cloud earlier, I apologize. I've been talking about the Zero Shoe Hana, which is the closed-toed actual shoe. It's got a canvas upper and then a very minimal um, sole. Anywho, this is turning into a Zero Shoes review. <laughs> uh, long way in saying, I'm running in the Hana, not the Cloud, running in the Hana, on this trail exploration run, follow the leader run with my um, youngest sister and my wife. And I, the only thing I can think of is when I did this little hop up onto a tree, hop down the other side, something about the way I landed may just put some extra force strain on my left foot. Of course, my left foot seems to be the one that's always <laughs> kind of uh, bearing the brunt of the injuries as of late or in general in my uh, career and running. And, uh, but what was weird is like, I didn't note any sort of twinge. Now, then again, I was really excited and happy. We were on this fun run and, you know, we continue on. We'd then go duck under another tr- down tree. And again, if you go out to Instagram, you can see all the <laughs> pictures of us just kind of running around through the forest. Um, I'm sure the neighbors whose house is back up to this forest either didn't care or were just like, why are these grown adults running around? But anyways, we were having fun. So <laughs> And it was during a nice cold snap. So it was like, you know, 30s Fahrenheit out there and we're in cold gear and <laughs> enjoying ourselves. Um, but anyways, eventually we make our way back. Rest of the day, don't notice my foot. Um, actually, now I do want to share on my screen again. And the next day was just an, an off day. It was the 27th. So I just, I didn't do anything unless I maybe did. I don't even know remember if I did resistance training or some... Um, calf raises or anything like that, or some calf extensions. But it wasn't until two days later after that, that I was like, I skipped my run here because my Achilles and the left side, lower side of my ankle just felt tweaked. Um, oops, we'll say I did do 3.1. I did go for a walk. And then it was the following day that you know, woke up and my foot was really sore, just living mobility in my left ankle, um, you know, still under towards that back side of, of my outside of the ankle. And then just was like, yeah, definitely no running. I know it earlier in the day, I was going to try resistance training and then still didn't do a full resistance training that I had, I had listed here. Um, I then did some modified calf raises on, oh, on a step. So on the steps, I just would go over and, on the ball, I'd put place 
depending on which foot I do one foot at a time and place the balls of my foot on the end of the, the step. So then my heel would then lower and go below the step and come back up. And what I'd normally do for this is eccentric. I'd also do eccentric stretches this way where you just, again, put the balls feet on the edge of the step, lower your heel down. And then that helps lengthen out and kind of, there's more technical terms and a physical therapist or doctor could probably explain this better, but it helps kind of purposely break up um, the Achilles and some of the other things to then hopefully get it to reheal in more of a straight way. Otherwise, like if you injure it, at least based on the, I don't want to overstep my training here, but my certification, but based on what I've at least researched and, you know, done some research on myself is that it then helps um, break up any jumbledness in your um, Achilles and other uh, fascia. I think I remember looking this up at, for some hit, you know, fascia around my hip when I was having some issues there. Um, anywho, getting off topic here. So that's where I mean by modified then normally with calf raises, I just let the other foot hang um, off the step. So then it's only the one foot supporting my weight and then also doing the actual strap. So for the um, raises, I then lower my foot, my heel, pretend my palm is my heel, come up, go above the step and then come back down and then repeat that however many reps I want to do and then number of sets I want to do with each foot. Um, but for modified, I left the other foot kind of on top of step. So then I wasn't putting my full weight on, especially my left foot. I was just then really kind of testing out, okay, can I do the stretch? Is it hurting? Is it not hurting? Because I remember from, I forget at one point, one of my, one of the previous doctors or physical therapists I saw in the past had said like, you know, with, if this actually is a tendon ish, issue, you want to, once it's kind of, you know, once you've rested it, it's no longer hurting, you want to get mobility back into it because that will help um, and do some of these, the, you know, the, the calf raises was one of the ones this particular, um, I think physical therapist or was a podiatrist. I can't remember at this point, but one of those doctors gave me these exercises to then do. So then it helps build back the mobility. You know, you maintain your mobility. You're not going to lose mobility because if those, some of those tendons, they told me heal wrong, <laughs> you end up with some other issues. So again, take this with a grain of salt. I am not a doctor, not a physical therapist. So if you are having your own issues, um, obviously do your own research and at the very, you know, what I would always just go with saying is reach out to your, your trusted physician, trusted um, physical therapist. If you don't have one, look one up. Like, look, likely, assuming you've got coverage and all that fun stuff, you have someone that you can find locally to reach out to um, and go from there. Um, I'm even at the point myself where I keep having these recurring things. Is it my body telling me like, whoa, Brent, you know, you keep trying to jump from all these running goals to running goals this past year. Why don't you just take some time off, which I really did through, oh, geez, July, August, September of this past year in 2020. And I really did like that. I was just kind of having more of like a nonchalant, like, yeah, run once a week, maybe twice, do a lot more biking, more longboarding, enjoy more walks. And that's really what I was trying to do with this training plan. Um, where I'm only doing four days a week. It's very minimal mileage, at least compared to what I was doing, where kind of my go-to runs was anywhere from three to six miles on a, on the more on a whim runs and not really, you know, and long runs being just that three miles. Um, so anywho, I got, did some of the modified, getting back to the actual training plan here, um, did my modified calf raises, and again, the following day, same thing. I just basically skipped the rest of the runs for the day and just did um, modified calf raises as I could and also some more calf stretches, um, one leg behind the other, our leg in front and just kind of holding on to um, wall, desk or whatever. So then I could then stretch out my calf. Sorry, my daughter is now joined in the background. <laughs> I started hearing her. Um, and then for the end of the week, end up doing a longer walk from our in-laws house into town to go grab a um, coffee in town. And the foot was feeling better at this point. Up to that point, I was definitely babying my left foot when it was really sore and um, <laughs> then found I was getting a bit sore on my right leg because I was then offsetting the left. Um, but at least I had tried some walks in here where that one felt, you know, 
earlier in the week, did a walk. It's like, okay, you know, I feel myself a little off in how I'm walking, but then woke up the next morning. I was like, Ooh, my foot's really sore. So then I just tried again <laughs> with a long walk. Um, Cause again, walking for the most part was fine. Once I kind of found and kind of work, you know, warmed up my, my ankle. And then actually yesterday I haven't updated my um, spreadsheet and I actually forgot to do my heart rate assessment. <laughs> Oh, write that in now. Uh, forgot to do. Um, but we were actually packing up and we just traveled and came back home yesterday. And so as a rest day, my, actual, my ankle was feeling a lot better. Um, didn't wake up with the soreness after this walk yesterday morning as I did earlier in the week, which is actually a good sign. Um, so today I'm actually supposed to go out and do 1.5 miles, which I've already decided I'm not going to go do. Um, maybe later in the day do some resistance training, do some of the modified calf raises and things like that and stretches that I was talking about earlier. And then if the weather's nice and the, sorry, the windows are now blocked, but <laughs> I could probably stop sharing at this point. You know, if the weather's nice, go out and do a nice walk with my daughter in the pram and, um, you know, just kind of see how the ankle is tomorrow. And then maybe move that 1.5 mile run that I was supposed to do today to tomorrow and really just kind of assess. So I think that's what I'm really liking with having this long extended building um, phase is that it's, it leaves a lot of just space. And I like that kind of space to then realize like, okay, am I feeling it today? Do I have any, you know, actual injuries? Do I need to push back a day, move a day? Um, for the most part, it's been working well, except for like that fall. And now I've got the ankle thing, which is just, um, you know, I've already missed three. Sorry, you can't see it, but I've flipped back to my training plan. Now I'm going to miss four runs, <laughs> which actually still puts me at that two or no, one to four missed days. So it really depends on tomorrow how I'm feeling, if I can come back and then get my run in there, maybe just do a shorter run again. We'll see how I feel. And then next week's update, I'll provide a further update of. <laughs> <laughs> week five went if I had to do any more modification, miss any more runs, how I came back into the training. Um, so definitely stay tune in for next week. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, sign up for the notifications. Um, if not, at least check back in uh, next week, Friday, Saturday. Been trying to at least keep this somewhat consistent with what days I've been getting this out and uh, posted. And yeah, we'll go from there. Um, Final note is week six is going to be an easy week anyways, um, which was really just going to bring back down the mileage for the overall week and also the longer runs. If I remember correctly, it's going to drop it down to only 70% of the biggest building week is I think what my certification usually notes for easy weeks. Anywho, uh, more on that next week. And again, if you've got questions, comments, definitely feel free to leave those below. <laughs> I'm always good on staying top of staying on top of those, and I appreciate those who've been leaving comments. Um, it's been fun interacting and seeing what you have been doing, what's been working well for you. What maybe, <laughs> you know, if you find yourself in these fun conundrums of um, foot fun or whatever uh, that you end up finding yourself during your training, but yeah, love to hear your stories and what's gotten you through um, any sort of time periods of injury, and yeah, <laughs> we'll go from there. <laughs> Happy running. Ha <laughs> ha.